Shepherd in Lucas, Texas. It's so great to see you here today. It's great to have you online and visiting with us uh, today or, or sharing worship together. And let me uh, just make mention of uh, a few things. My name is Wally Williams. I hope to be the pastor here. Uh, I, try, I give it a try anyway. Uh, but anyway, we're just excited that you're here and that we can worship together. Let me just share a, a couple of, of announcements. First, Candlelight Christmas Eve is at 5 o'clock, and reservations are required. And contact Cheryl uh, for that. Uh, it will be streamed live on Facebook and also available on YouTube. Uh, for those worshiping online with us, uh, we have uh, a particular sacks that um, they're outside on the west entrance and they have a small car with the, the the lyrics of silent night and a candle and other gifts or whatever and they're outside in a bin at the west entrance of the church and if you would like to to worship uh, online on christmas eve uh, simply come by the, the church uh, they're in a bin outside pick those up and that would be helpful our weekly reservations uh, are also needed and so uh, for those that are worshiping online, if you wish to come and share with us, uh, give us a, a call if you would, if we do require a mask. And I am told that uh, the food bank uh, has a lot and a lot of people that need our assistance. And so uh, we encourage um, you to bring food, seriously, bring as much food as you can because there is a lot of people. I'm hearing that the cars are just in a long line around the food bank. And so uh, we're collecting food and the list is in the newsletter or on the ACO uh, food bank page. But those are there. Let us go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Let, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity for us to be here. To worship you, lift up your name, to bow down before you to acknowledge your presence in our world, to acknowledge your presence in our church, whether it be online or in person, we thank you for your presence. Father, be with us as we look at your word, as we sing songs and pray prayers and acknowledge the greatest event in history, the coming of Jesus to this world. We give you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. At this time, Mike, Karen Hollingsworth will come for the lighting of the Advent candle. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, who is love itself, the divine made fully present in human life. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of love, that the keeping of Advent may open our hearts to God's love, that the light of Christ may penetrate the darkness of sin, that this wreath may constantly remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ, that the Christmas season may fill us with peace and joy as we strive to follow the example of Jesus. Let's join together as a church family. Loving, Loving God, God, your, your church, church joyful Lord, awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This time we will continue our worship, and Melinda Vaughn will lead us in our call to worship this morning. Let us go ahead and stand together. Let, it, let us go ahead and stand as we share this call to worship together. Welcome the state of worship. The light of this season has beckoned us forward. Come and rejoice, for God's light is coming to us. Praise be to God who pours light into our lives. Open your hearts and spirits and receive the blessings of God. 
May we always be ready to respond in joyful ways to God's love. Amen. And let's remain standing on this beautiful Sunday morning and let's join in singing There's a Song in the Air. You may be seated. Thank you so much. As we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to continue to pray for Daryl and Carrie and the family and Betty and Amelia and Amy and Chrissy and the Utley family, Matthew, Lisa, Bill and Gary, Dick, Don and Mark, Randall, Debbie, Myra and Mark as well. There are, there are those that, that are dealing with some difficult situations and we want to lift them up. But uh, let us be called to prayer musically if we would at this time. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us praise. Most gracious Father, As we pause during worship to acknowledge your majesty, we thank you for the awesomeness that belongs to you. We thank you for the, the greatness that you own. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless us as we acknowledge the King of kings and the lords of lords. Father, bless us as we understand that there are so many people across this nation, in our community, and even in Allen and Parker and, and Wiley, that, that are hurting, that are hurting and need food. Father God, we understand that in the scriptures, you work through people. We understand that the disciples fed the multitudes after you gave thanks 
and broke it. We ask, Father, in a very serious way that this morning we would acknowledge the fact that you can feed multitudes through us. So we ask, Lord, that when we go to the grocery store, that we buy a little extra because there are so many people hurting, so many people that are hungry, so many people that don't know where their next meal is going to come from due to this season of COVID that we're in. So, Father, thank you for working through us. And may Good Shepherd be a light. And may we collect foodstuffs for those that are in need and help us to take seriously the call to serve our fellow man and woman and children. We ask, Lord, that you would just bless us as we take up the mantle and take up that responsibility of reaching out and helping someone that is in need. Father, bless us as we do so, and we will give you the praise. And Father, we ask that you would bless us as we dig deep in ways to help other people, that you're depending on us, that it's our goal and our objective to minister to other people, not in our name, but in your name. Be with us as a congregation here and online as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You know, last week, uh, Friday, a week ago, I did something boneheaded and fell and broke three of my ribs. And I was in a bunch of pain last week. A hundred times better this week. But I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of the staff. Uh, for that very nice love offering that you guys took up for us. That was a surprise, and it was was very welcome. And I'm so so appreciative. I think I'm going to pay it forward to a young, gentlemanly x-ray technician named Marquise at Baylor Scott & White Hospital. But I just wanted to say how much I appreciate you and you allowing me to be here. So anyway, Mike... Let's sing. Let's stand and sing. The gift of love. Our 
remain standing. Melinda, I'm going to ask you to come and we will share together the Apostles' Creed, the faith that we have as United Methodists. I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth, and in, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin, the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, dead, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you very, very much. The scripture that we are going to be looking at today comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 10 to 12, and it concerns the Magi who came. Uh, let, me, um, let me back up just a little bit to, to 7. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and just... Uh, back up a little bit. Uh, then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. And when he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star had, that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented to him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their country by another route. May God add his blessings to the reading and our hearing of his holy inspired word to our hearts today. Before we share in our message, let's pray together, if we would. Gracious Father and our God, now may the words of my mouth and yes, the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For we thank you in Christ. Amen. You know, we are concluding a, um, an Advent sermon series called Christmas Gifts That Always Fit. Forgiveness always fit. Encouragement fits perfectly. Appreciation fits and our service to our fellow human being fits perfectly. And that is a Christmas gift that we can give continually. But, but let me just share one of the most charming and inspirational Christmas stories that I have run across in my years of ministry. It was written in a December issue of the Guidepost magazine. How many remember the Guidepost magazine? Several do. The Guidepost magazine is a story about a young family at Christmas, the day really before Christmas. You see, uh, the wife of the family was going to go do some shopping and asked her husband if she could watch the three kids. And the children were playing in their room and uh, watching television. An hour went by and the nine-year-old daughter came in and said, Daddy, Daddy, we have a Christmas play that we would like to perform for you. Do you want to see it? 
And, of course, the father said, yes, I want to come see this particular play. And so the father went in to the bedroom and was a one-man audience, if you will. And the father saw a flashlight sitting on a chair, one of the kitchen chairs that was spotlighting the Holy Family. And then son Rex, who was seven years old, was Joseph, and he wore a towel around his head and used one of his father's ties to hold it on. And he was wearing a red bathrobe from his father. And then, Demo- and then the daughter, Samantha, who was nine years old, uh, was Mary. She had a flowered pillowcase around her head, and uh, she had a sheet, a bed sheet, wrapped around her. A little baby Jesus was a doll that was rolled up in a bath towel and placed in a shoebox. And finally, little Annie came in, five years old, and she was riding a camel. At least she moved like she was riding a camel. And she walked in, and she had on her mother's dress, high heels, all of her mother's jewelry, anything that she could find, and she was holding a pillow. And on that pillow rested three gifts. And she walked in, and the play only had one line in it, and it was hers. Little Amy said, I am all three wise men. And bring you precious gifts of gold, circumstances, and mud. And that was it. The play was over. But Dad didn't laugh. He did not correct his daughter. Rather, he paused and he had a word of prayer because he realized how close his daughter came to the true message of Christmas. Of course, little Annie was supposed to say gold and frankincense and myrrh, but she mixed up the words a little bit, but got right to the heart of Christmas. So this morning, I would like to share with you how we can give our gold, our circumstances, and mud. First, we can give our gold. We can give God that which is precious to us. Let me ask you, what is precious to you? What is really precious to you and to you online? I hope when you think about preciousness, you don't think about your house or your car. It's not what is precious, it's who is precious. Your children, your grandchildren, your spouse, your family members, or your friendships. I encourage you this season, when we are apart, when we are six feet apart, you go into those restaurants and you see those little stickers on the, on the ground And it says we acknowledge social distancing and you're supposed to stand on the dot and move forward and stay six feet apart. But in this season of being separated, I pray that we can join together and say a prayer for each of those people that are precious to us. Thanking God for them and thanking Him for bringing them into our life Thank you for the impact and the influence that they have had in our life. You know, many of you remember in the book of Mark about uh, the woman who, who anointed the feet of Jesus with costly perfume. I can just see her going to the marketplace and trying to buy some, some ointment and looking at the vendor. She looked at the vendor, vendor and said, I would like to buy some scented oils. I would like to purchase the very best that you have. And so the vendor reaches down 
to a shelf and holds a bottle and says, now this stuff is really, really good stuff. Everybody has it. It's very popular. This is wonderful, wonderful perfume. And the woman said, is that the best you got? So he put that one back and he reached up to the middle shelf and he said, now this, this is a little more expensive. Not very many people have this perfume. It's really, really good stuff. I, I'm told that it's excellent. Would you like this? And she says, is that the best you got? Is that the very best you have? So he reaches up on the top shelf, blows the dust off. He says, now this is the very, very best that I have. No one has this perfume. This is excellent stuff. And she said, then I'll take it. She buys it. She go, goes to Simon, the Pharisee, goes to his home, opens the bottle, and as they are having dinner, as Jesus and Simon are having dinner, she anoints his feet. And the point is, when she anointed his feet with that oil, she gave the very best to God. The very, very best to God. Now, what does that have to say to us? It really asks us a question. Are we giving our very best? Not financially, but as our bishop encourages, every time he, he, he talks to us, he talks about excellence in ministry and how we should do it our very best. Excellence in our teaching, excellence in our singing, excellence in our teaching, excellence in our service, excellence. God was blessed by that woman who gave her very best. Jesus Christ gave his life, his very best on the cross, and we too are to give our best to God. And when we give God our best, ministry will flourish. Ministry will happen. So let's go back to the play. Not only can we give him our gold, and that's not in the financial sense, but that is giving to him what is precious. And the second thing we can do is give him our circumstances. God is concerned about your unique circumstances. He's concerned about you and your, and your unique circumstances. You know, I was 18 years old. Like many 18 years old, I, I worked in a restaurant. Some of you uh, might remember the, uh, it was a steakhouse in Dallas. How many remember the railhead? Does anybody remember the, you, were the, you remember that? That, that was a, a, a very significant place on Greenville Avenue. And, and uh, anyway, I was standing outside the manager's office. And I need to ask the manager a question. And as I was asking him uh, or standing outside the office, I could hear through the paper-thin walls the manager was firing a waiter. The waiter says, Please keep me on. Please keep me on. I, I can't lose my job. My wife just lost her job. I have three kids and a mortgage. I, I need this job. And the manager raised his voice and yelling. He said, I don't care about your wife's job. I don't care about your children. I don't care about your mortgage. All I'm interested in is the bottom line of this restaurant I am not concerned about your circumstances, he yelled. And that's the good news of Christmas. 
is that God is concerned about your circumstance, wherever you are, your situation. And God is concerned with that waiter's circumstance. I don't know where he is today. But you might say, well, Wally, how do you know that he is really concerned and cares? I know that because the baby's name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. He's with us in every circumstance of life. Martin Luther King said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. He continues and says, no matter where you are in life, you can choose how you respond to your circumstance. Circumstance. So whatever your circumstance right this second, whether it be great or whether it be small, God knows that circumstance and wraps his mind around that circumstance and will take care of it in his time. Hear me now. In his time. The gospel tells us very clearly that we can bring our circumstances to the manger and give them to Jesus. So we can bring our, our gold and give him our best. We can bring our circumstances, no matter what they are. And then lastly, we can bring our mud. God can and we'll clean up our messes if we ask him. That's what I mean by mud. Our inadequacies, our failures, we can bring those to God. And no one knows how God's grace works. But the miracle of his grace is that God can and will clean up our messes if we ask him. He reconciles our mess. He transforms the mess that we make. You know, we can know Jesus as Savior. We can know him as Lord. We can know him as the way. We can know him as the truth. We can uh, know him as the resurrection and the life. We can know him in the, as the vine, as the good shepherd. We can know him by many, many names. But the name that I like the best I read an article this, this, uh, t a couple of weeks ago. The best name that I know for Jesus is janitor. Is janitor. We all know that janitor is the one who cleans up messes. And I think that we all need to say that we have many messes in our lives. I know I have made a mess in my life and God has cleaned it up. In a humble way, he cleans up that mess. 1 John 4, 9 is my favorite. It says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But here's the problem. Sometimes we don't like to admit that we make messes. We don't like to admit it. The first people on earth that God created in Genesis chapter 6, he created them and they took a bite from the tree of knowledge that they weren't supposed to take a bite of. And what happened? Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the snake. Nobody wanted to take responsibility for their mess. But John quotes Jesus and says, I have come to save people from their sin. That's what Christmas is about. I have come to save you, to save me 
from the messes that we make. And this is what grace is all about. And John Wesley encourages us to discover and have our hearts strangely warm. We talked about this in Bible study, about the Aldersgate experience last week. We talked about how he was listening to a layperson read from the book of Romans. And John Wesley's heart was strangely warmed and he felt he did trust in Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of sin. And how we need to experience God's grace. And then Wesley tells us to grow in that grace. And we talked about how we can grow in provenient grace and justifying grace and sanctifying grace and become holy His. You know, I, I have a, well, I have eight pastor friends that I meet with quarterly. And we get together for a Bible study, but we can't get together during this season, so we Zoomed one another. And the topic was on forgiveness of our Bible study. And one of the pastors shared an experience about forgiveness. He was in his office. He said typing his computer or typing on, on a sermon on his computer and, and his back was to the door and you know how you feel like somebody's watching you? Well, he turned around and there was a lady standing at the door. And this lady had obviously been crying, so he invited her in and he had her sit down. And she said, I'm not a member of this church, but I saw the steeple out front and I just needed to tell somebody a terrible thing that I've done. You see, I, 12 years ago, she said, I got married and then got pregnant. My husband was killed in an automobile accident. And I was so overcome by grief, I did a very awful thing. Then through the tears, she said, I drove to the best neighborhood that I could find. I found the best house that I could find. I peeked into the window and I saw people in there. And I took my baby in a basket and put it down on the, on the ground in front of the door and I knocked on the door and ran. Then she looked at the pastor and she said, sorry, I'm getting emotional here. How can God ever forgive me for doing something like that? And my pastor friend said, God has already forgiven you for that. But the question is, can you forgive yourself? Friends, that's what Christmas is all about. God forgiving our mud, our messes. I know none of you have abandoned a baby, but we certainly have messed things up. Think about it. And God through Christ becomes that janitor that cleans up the mess. So like little Annie said, I come to you and bring you my gold, my circumstances, and my mud, and we can bring that to the manger. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so very much for accepting and blessing those that are precious to us. Thank you so much for taking 
our circumstances, whatever they are, and working with them in your time. We praise you this morning for taking our mud and our mistakes. And we ask, Father, that you would forgive them and bless them and make them white as snow. Father, we honor you this morning. We ask, Lord, that you would be with us wherever we are. Whether we be in our kitchen or living room or this sanctuary. We ask that you would bless and bless mightily in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. At this time, we will share together with our tithes and offerings. And let us remember that there are baskets that are located uh, near, the, near the east entrance of the door here as well as, as you come in. And we ask that uh, you would just bless this church. Bless God's ministry as we continue uh, to serve him through Good Shepherd UMC. For those at home, you can pay online, you can do it through the mail, or you can drop it off into the church, and that would be helpful. So let us think about and pray about what we're going to give and, and how we're going to do that as Mike shares with us this morning. It's a house full of noise Cause the family's all in town It's an attic full of toys So the kids won't find out The smell of cookies in the oven It's a slow dance in the kitchen Oh, ain't it something? It's a Christmas to believe in It's in the snow making angels It's a mistletoe kiss It's an empty seat at the table To remember who we miss It's a candlelight carol It's a grateful choir singing Oh, heart the herald It's a Christmas to believe in More than just a merry Christmas I'm wishing you Christmas to believe in, where the moments turn to memories, and years from now you'll close your eyes and see them, more than just another busy season, I'm wishing you Christmas to believe in. By the fire, watching all our favorite movies. It's a wonderful life, in black and white, just like it should be. It's Salvation Army bells, hear them ringing to remind us there's a world that needs our help. May compassion come and find us. More than just a Merry Christmas, I'm wishing you a Christmas to believe. Where the moments turn to memories And years from now you'll close your eyes and see them More than just another busy season I'm wishing you a Christmas to believe in A Christmas to believe in A Christmas to believe in Grandpa's Bible opened up to Luke chapter 2. It's the greatest gift of love, being born for me and you. It's a heart returning home to the one who is the reason that every Christmas is a Christmas to believe in. So may your Christmas 
Christmas, dear Christmas to believe in. Let's go ahead and stand for a doxology if we would. join us on Thursday night for our Christmas Eve service and those of you at home we hope that you can join us too if not I hope you have the merriest of Christmases Mike thank you for that song that was beautiful oh, well, thanks let's join and sing it we three kings of Thank you very much. Uh, Mark stole my thunder. You might want to say, I do want to, I was going to share this before the benediction, but I want to thank everyone, SPRC, for organizing the, the Christmas gift and love offering that you gave to the staff of the church. It is remarkable, and thank you so very much. Um, yes, I had a flat tire, and it's going to buy a new tire. However, I do have a, a little bit left over I wish to acknowledge and help out those that are hungry. And um, thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know how I can uh, share that any, any, any more, but let us receive our benediction. Let's pray together. Father God, dismiss us from this place and help us to respond and share with you gifts that we have, whether it be our circumstances or our messes, 
or what is precious to us, we give them to you. Dismiss us in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Christmas. Merry Christmas.